Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. In this video, one of our in-house analysts has compiled a list of four top lane champions that you should pick up in order to improve and climb with. They're not mutually exclusive of each other, but you should be warned that the champions we talk about later might come with some growing pains. First, however, we will talk about top laners which you should pick up if you want to win more games as soon as possible. For every champion, we're also going to give you a thorough analysis of why they're great picks for your development as a player. So make sure to leave any feedback in the comments down below and let us know what you want our next video to be about. But before we get started, make sure you go to ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements in your rank. We upload video guides similar to this one on our website every single day. As of now, we're currently uploading a challenger gameplay analysis for every single champion, so make sure to click that link below. Also, we have an exclusive coaching feature called InstaPro, which provides instant on-demand 24-7 coaching from the best of the best. Trust me guys, you don't want to miss out on this, so sign up today. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Kicking it off, our first pick is Rumble. While he did just get nerfed, he's still the same old junkyard titan that we either hate or love. Before we can explain why we choose Rumble, we need to talk about his strengths. There are a lot of reasons why Rumble can be a great pick. Firstly, he's a safe pick who can farm in his bad matchups as long as he doesn't feed some early kills. He's also of course an insanely strong teamfighter with the equalizer, and for lack of better words, he's just OP at trading. He's a champion who really doesn't need any jungle pressure either. This paints the picture pretty well, but the reason why you should pick Rumble is because he's also able to pull ahead by himself while simultaneously creating opportunities to teamfight or skirmish. What it comes back to is his oppressive trading patterns. Anytime his abilities are up, you probably can't beat him. His Q does insane damage, he has a low cooldown shield, and can slow you to chase or kite you. And, of course, he doesn't have any mana costs. Anytime his Q and W is up, he pretty much crushes his opponents in trades, and as a result can take lane priority or bully his opponents in most matchups. Playing Rumble helps you develop an understanding of how to use power advantages to create leads. After taking lane priority, you're able to control the wave and then either roam or make a cross map play with teleport. You can also build up a knack for teamfighting and initiating fights since that's pretty much what makes Rumble, Rumble. Lower elo players will especially appreciate this, since teamfights are so unpredictable and frequent. Anytime you see an opponent mispositioned or in a corridor or a choke, you can ult them and force them to either walk through fire or use flash. When they're clumped up, you can use your flash and E simultaneously and then follow it up with Q for insane AoE damage. The combination of Leandri's and Zhonya's in Rumble's core build complements his battle mage style excellently. You're able to play ridiculously aggressive while gaining strength over the course of fights. Now his weaknesses actually help support our argument on why you should pick him up. He gets punished very hard for mistakes, he's not a fast split pusher, and he's sensitive to jungle pressure. Basically, by playing Rumble, you begin to understand how impactful leaving yourself vulnerable to jungle pressure really is. Especially versus champions who can chase you down the lane, you're probably going to fall victim to solo kill after solo kill if you let them find a lead and hit the ground running. It'll only take one bad game for you to learn, pretty much the hard way. You need to value good warding and trading intelligently when it's safe. Rumble's strong laning phase means it's harder for him to make mistakes, but you also get punished harder when you do. You don't have the same late game assurance as many other champs, so you need to learn how to play well consistently. The bright side is it's easier to play Rumble very well than most other characters. There is a downside to picking Rumble though. Due to Rumble's overpowered trading, solid wave clear, and ability to break freezes with ease, players might start using Rumble as a band-aid fix or a crutch for underlying weaknesses in their play, namely understanding the intricacies of wave management. Even without perfect wave management, you can win trades through sheer brute force. If you ever mess up your wave and allow your opponent to freeze, you can just ult the next wave and recall to avoid punishment. As long as you're self-aware and don't rely on Rumble as a champion, he's still a solid solid pickup to help you climb and teach you how to impact through carrying teamfights. Our next pick, to no one's surprise, is Jax. Not only is he a strong champion, but he's also one that teaches players how to shoulder responsibility and carry games. We'll throw in Aurelia too, because everything we say is applicable to both, but just know that Jax is in a better place to carry right now. Aurelia does deserve recognition, because in some matchups they can be better for her, and a single patch in the future might allow her once again to claim her throne as the queen of top lane. Jax is a very strong pick because he can split push and team fight effectively. He has insane kill pressure when he's ahead, and of course he's very mobile and has the ability to gap close. 
His only notable weakness is that he's got some bad matchups, which again is a supplement of players trying to improve. To get around them, players need to learn how to outplay their opponent and learn how to play with the intent of breaking even. With how snowbally and volatile Jax is, playing him often teaches you how to wait for and also play around power spikes. Quite often, players do so without even realizing it. Every component or item Jax finishes feels pretty hefty. Sheen or Trinity Force bumps up his damage, synergizing well with his low cooldowns. Spear of Sojin means there's no hope of escaping from him, and Stair Axe makes him difficult to burst down, allowing him to thrive in extended fights. One solo kill, or one really good trade, is all it takes to kickstart your domination over the game, so you need to learn how to identify when you're stronger than your opponent. Little things like level 5, exactly is when I'm stronger than my opponent, or with an extra Doran's Blade, I can barely win an all-in fight, are invaluable pieces of information that you have to learn how to take advantage of while playing Jax. Find ways to bait your opponent to fight you, or deny them via minion wave management. The other thing about playing Jax is that you start to get better at balancing the act between split pushing and team fighting. He's great at both, so you unironically have to learn how to 1v5 and 5v5. In regards to split pushing, you have to figure out things like can I dive my opponent, and can I 1v2, 1v3, or even 1v5? While split pushing, there's going to be opportunities for you to collapse on teamfights and clean up some kills. Other times, you're not going to be in position to rotate and have to constantly ask yourself which one is the better move. When teamfighting, you need to understand when you have lethal threat on your priority targets so you don't jump in and int. The other thing is that since you're not as tanky as a juggernaut or a true tank, you have to get good at zoning your opponents. In other words, you have to threaten them with the possibility of diving them to force them to back off. At the same time, you have to avoid committing when you can't kill your enemies. By doing so, you're accomplishing the same zone control a tank provides without taking damage for it. Another champion to pick up is Jace. We're not gonna lie, his general statistics are pretty bad, but if you're dedicated and willing to put in the time, Jace is a champion that experienced players find out his out-of-world results. Veteran Jace players see above a 54% win rate with him currently, and here's why. He is the king of fundamentals. Seriously, he abuses every basic technique to create leads. CSing, harassing, wave management, and roaming. What it looks like in practice is poking your opponents when they farm, slow pushing to create pressure, forcing your opponents to trade by freezing, roaming after the wave crashes, like we said, he uses everything. The reason that his win rate is so poor is because you need to play him very well. Otherwise, any other champion you pick could have more impact than he does. He's the Jace of all trades. His strength is that he's capable of everything, but he's outmatched by nearly all of the champions in at least one regard. When played by a great player, he's arguably OP because he's above average at all fronts. Otherwise, he's just a mediocre pick since he doesn't have one specific specialty. Low elo players are often a advise to stay away from him because of this, but if you don't mind his lower win rates or enjoy playing him, go for it because practicing him won't hurt you and you can ultimately be rewarded in the long run. With our monologue on self-improvement out of the way now, here's why Jace is a good pick. He's one of the best blind pick champions in the game. He's a very fast split pusher, he has a flexible build path, and 6 abilities with 2 passives before level 6, as well as snowballing very hard with lethality and armor pen. Like many other strong blind pick champions, Jace has a lot of keystone versatility. He can take Conqueror, Summon Airy, Phase Rush, or Electrocute based on which trade patterns would benefit him the most in lane. This pretty much guarantees that you can take lane priority at some point in the game. With it, you can flex your ability to perfectly farm, zone your opponent, and continue pressuring them or their teammates once you crash minion waves into the turret. On your first base, you can either build towards a serrated dirk for some extra oomph on your abilities, or phase for some safety and mobility. While he can can't go AP, seriously, don't, Jace can opt for more defensive builds by building tankier items like Black Cleaver, Edge of Night, and Maw of Malmordius if he needs them. When snowballing, he can instead rush Lethality Item after Lethality Item and finish it off with a Mortal Reminder or Lord Dominic's Regard to pretty much one-shot anybody. Jace did receive a nerf a few patches ago, but it wasn't really that bad. Compared to his pre-state nerf, Jace breaks even at level 6 and only gets stronger from there. In the early game, missing a little bit of AD doesn't mean much when you have 6 abilities. Towards the mid game, this means that he's even stronger than he used to be as long as you don't randomly get solo killed early on and start falling behind. Jace teaches you how to win your lane and use your leads to snowball to victory. With or without help, you can reliably pull ahead against your opponent or break even if you're getting camped. Since he's so versatile,
versatile and well-rounded, there's a bunch of different ways to go about transitioning leads from laning phase into small victories later on. You're able to push in lanes and pressure turrets or roam for deep vision to set up plays. It's also pretty realistic for you to be able to secure Rift Herald in the majority of your games with your topside pressure. Our fourth pick is Camille. Camille is a solid pick for a couple of reasons. She has great initiation and pick making. She has one of the longest engage ranges in the game, and of course, has a very adaptable playstyle. She does have some abysmal matchups, but the good thing is her flexible playstyle means she has ways to at least pick up farm in most of them. Aside from her ability to choose between Comet, Press the Attack, Conqueror, Kleptomancy, and Grasp, Camille is also to make adaptations during the game as well. One thing that's uncommon about her is she's one of the few champions who can viably max any of her abilities first. It just depends on your playstyle and what matchup you're in. In matchups where you need to harass with Grasp and Q, you can max it to lower the cooldown and make those short trades a little heftier. In cases where it's really hard to get in melee range or you want to maintain distance, you can max W for more poke and sustain. When the biggest issue is closing the distance, you can max E to lower its cooldown and for the increased attack speed for stronger all-ins. Even though these adaptations aren't enough to make every possible matchup a winning one, they're still there to help alleviate pressure and allow you to catch your opponents off guard. Similar to Jax and Aurelia, Camille is capable of snowballing her lane. In terms of laning, split pushing, and team fighting, she's almost like a third echo of her playstyle. What really makes her different from the others though is her emphasis on pick making, initiating fights, and flanks. While the former two also use these concepts, it's the most important and strongest tool in Camille's arsenal. This comes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is her massive engage range. Camille's hookshot doubles in distance because you pull yourself to a wall and then lets her jump off from it. Following up, she can use her ultimate to close even more distance to cover nearly two screens worth of distance. As a result, she's a great flanking champion. Champion. Playing Camille forces you to take advantage of the fog of war while also moving around the map. Whether it's to make picks or unexpectedly engage in your opponents, your goal is to single out an enemy while they don't see it coming or when they underestimate your range. Bar any insane item or level leads, Camille isn't as strong as other bruisers in longer fights. This is because her ultimate's damage is quite negligible and serves a utility focused purpose. Many other divers are equipped with some kind of long term damage steroid. Jax and Aurelia have their passive. Hecarim's Q has basically no cooldown. Master Yi has a reset mechanic. While Camille only has a short burst of attack speed from her E and bonus damage on two auto attacks from her Q. What this means is you need to be proactive and more importantly, decisive. If you wanted to hard carry traditional 5v5 fights, you wouldn't pick Camille. You pick Camille because you want to act quickly, catch your opponents off guard, and abuse these brief moments of vulnerability. Playing Camille teaches you how to not hesitate during crucial moments and look for advantageous engages. All right, that's going to conclude our top lane picks to climb and improve. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides all designed to help you take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel where we're constantly updating it with new content just like this. Good luck on the Rift, and we will see you all next time.